so you like went through the NBA draft stuff, right? So tell me about yes, that. I like did. what to somebody who has no idea what like entering that is. So first entering for the NBA draft, you have to declare. And with that, you have to send an email requesting uh, basically that you're going to declare. You send an email to the NBA telling them that you're going to declare for the draft. And then once you – but, like, in that email, you have to let them know if you're signing with the agent or not signing with the agent and, like, who is going to be, like, your contact information for, like, if teams want to reach out. Uh, with COVID and everything going on, it was a lot different, uh, like, for the draft process just because – with um in the regular process you get to have uh you do the nba interviews which i went through this year but also you get the workouts and then you know the combine and then all of that is like early you know it's in may and then um so that happens but for this year it was just uh the NBA interviews. So tell me about like the interview process. Like how, how does that work? Do you talk to like scouts and stuff from the NBA teams or like what? So it kind of depends really. Uh, you can, sometimes it could be scouts or sometimes it could be like the G League coaches, the uh, NBA GM or assistant GM on the call. So like for me, a lot of it, it was, it was scouts. It was assistant GMs um, in a lot of it was uh, like the G League coaches or people who are who run the G League just because for this year. What is your like dream team? Like where would you love to be drafted next year? That's a hard question. For me, I guess being stay home would be cool just so, you know, uh, just so family could come watch and people I know could come see me whenever we played at home. But I don't know, playing, being in Miami, I think that would be, that'd be dope. Or being in Cali, Cali's always a great place. So playing for the Clippers or the Lakers is always a dream to. So growing up, like, were the Nuggets your team? Like, all about Melo and, like, Chauncey Billups? Uh, Chauncey Billups, yes. Uh, that's, you know, that's a role model for me. Uh, we, to this day, uh, we keep in touch. If really? I ever need anything, yeah. Because I played uh, growing up from fifth grade to eighth grade, I played for his uh, club team. So, Chauncey oh. Bob's elite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've known him growing up, and so we've kept in touch. But uh, growing up, that was definitely one of the players I watched. So, I did watch the Nuggets when he was with them. But when he wasn't, I'm – even though I'm from Denver, I'm not a big, you know, Denver Nuggets fan. Like, right now, I'm a Portland Trailblazers fan because – of Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum just because yes exactly so if you had to build your starting five your dream starting five of current players who would you pick current players okay I'm gonna go Dame at the point given I'm gonna go Paul George at the two so yeah he usually plays a three but or he plays a two three so I'll put him at the two I don't know it's hard between LeBron or Kawhi Mm-hmm. I'll probably go with LeBron, and then I'll go with uh, A. Yeah, then I'll go with AD, and then probably Giannis. That's a big one, big old lineup. Yeah, it is. It is very. I mean, very unguardable. So. So, what is your fantasy starting five from like players who aren't playing anymore? I'll probably have to go with uh, Magic, Michael Jordan. Ah, I don't know. I, I just seeing the last dance that changed my perspective on a lot of things. I would have for sure said Kobe. I still mess with Kobe really tough, so that that's hard for the three. I'll probably go with uh, Scotty Scotty Pippen um, at the four. Carl Malone. Yeah. And then at the five, go with Kareem. Well, you said the last dance changed like your perspective on like Michael Jordan. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Why? Yes, that's correct. Because just seeing the highlights of him and just his attitude towards the game, I mean, I think, yeah, it's, you know, Kobe Bryant, LeBron Michael, like, I don't know what order, but just seeing that, it just changed so much because seeing how competitive 
com- how competitive he is. I'm not saying it reminded me of myself, but just seeing some things of like, that's how I try to go out and play, or that's how I view the game in certain ways, you know, things like that. So uh, watching that, it was crazy. And just seeing how easy it was for him, even when he was a rookie or like even in his first like couple of years in the NBA, it was just very easy for him and the place he had. So uh, it changed a lot. And I just, uh, I respect him more as a player and his um, approach to the game and uh, how he viewed competition. What's your favorite move? Like a floater, or like a pull-up three in transition, or like what's your go-to? Go-to is probably going uh, attacking left and shooting a floater with my right hand. I yeah. mean, I just feel like that's a – I mean, I'm going to make that almost all the time. That's just something I've always practiced, and it's just an easy shot to get to for me at least. Yeah, nobody sees it coming too. Like it's so fast. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You're like – pretty healthy I would say like your food decisions and stuff yeah yeah just conscious of what I put in my body um just try to see what a lot of my NBA players eat um obviously they have like personal chefs and things like that and I'm not super strict to the diet where every every meal has to be like that but I try to eat healthy just because I know what I what I put in is just is really going to help me on the court and things like that so I try to be aware and what is your favorite off-court memory from last season? So, like, hanging out, like, in hotels or, like, what you got? Uh, I, I don't know if I have a specific one, but just I think any time we got to travel, um, just because Wex was my roommate. Uh, shout out Backcourt Drip, of course. But um, that's my guy. So, uh, just being in the hotel was cool. And just being with my teammates as well, just any time we, you know, have to travel on the on the bus or get on the plane. It was definitely fun and uh it's sad that like this might gonna be my last year doing that with those guys. So I'm definitely gonna take advantage and you know and really embrace those moments. So you mentioned backcourt drip. What was the inspiration for that? So the real inspiration was uh me and Wex had been talking about dressing up and it was like Earlier in the year, we had talked about dressing up for school, and he had, uh, I think, for like a week straight, he had been dressing up like every day. So I was like, okay, like you know, his fits were uh, looking really nice. So I was like, I, ha- I have to start doing that. Then I started dressing up. Um, obviously, my closet wasn't as, I guess, as good as it is now. So I was probably not looking, didn't have the drip as much, but. Um, <laughs> you know, still dressing up. And then we just decided uh, we saw uh, NBA League Fits uh, or League Fits, which is on uh, Instagram for NBA players. Right. And we were thinking, you know, let's just do something for uh, for college guys or just for us, you know, just to get, get it started, things like that. So I don't know. I guess I would say um, I'm looking – I'm excited for a good year. Hopefully we get a season – whether that's we start later and it's a full season or whether that's conference play, but I'm just excited to get going um, to finally be with my teammates and, uh, you know, create more memories and um, get to travel and do things like that. I definitely missed that uh, during this summer and just being able to play with them because I'm definitely, I'm just going to enjoy my last year, um, try to win as many games as we can and just, uh, you know, really take in the experience of my senior season. So I'm very excited. Waves, meal prepping has become a popular way to stay on track with your nutrition goals. Enjoy fresh, delicious, and affordable healthy food made just for you. Visit eatnakedla.com to get started today.